Colossians 1, 15 to 20, the supremacy of the Son of God. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things on earth and heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is at the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Good morning and welcome to worship. Um, this Sunday for Cleveland Salvation Army is Harvest and um, we're going to have a look at climate change as part of our Harvest um, celebrations this this week. Um, there's, there's also a collection going to be made at the hall and if any of you would like to give who um, take part in our online worship, um, then you can do so. Just send a message, contact me and I'll give you details. Um, I had a bit of an argument with Felix, my four-year-old grandson, when I went to visit him, um, not last Saturday, but the Saturday before, because I was explaining to him um, how we get lots of things from deep underground. So I, so things like gold and diamonds and coal, I had to explain, explain to him what coal was, he didn't know. And then I went on to say that there are, are great big drills which bury down into the ground because he loves machinery and I thought he'd enjoy this and brings oil up. And sometimes it happens at sea even when great big oil rigs um, bring oil up and then they're put in either great big pipes or tankers. Um, and then they're, it's made into petrol for our cars. And he tried to explain to Silly Nanny, who has no idea about this type of thing um, and what she was talking about, that petrol comes from the pumps at Tesco. It doesn't come from underground. And I guess we were both right. It's just different perspectives on the same question. Where does petrol come from? And it just em emphasises really the fact of how distant we have become from creation. And I guess there are even some children who live in inner cities in particular who's never actually seen or touched or engaged with a, a, a cow or a chicken. And their only experience of that would be the meat or the cheese or the eggs or whatever, which is put into their sandwiches every day. But our world is in crisis in so many different ways, not just the coronavirus, but lots of ways and not least our natural world is in crisis and it's not a scam and whatever you may think climate change is accelerating and both the animal kingdom and the plant world um, is, is dying at an alarming rate and many species are becoming extinct and we just saw this week didn't we the terrible devastation caused by floods in Germany and this is just a common occurrence now um, all over the world and, and in our country too. And it's becoming so common uh, common that we hardly comment on it when it happens. Um, and the temperature is rising and the weather is becoming more and more extreme. And the truth of the matter is that this is the time to start worrying about it. And this is the time to start doing something about it. Um, the, there's a summit coming up in Glasgow, isn't there, in November um, about the global crisis in global warming. So we need to pray for the leaders of countries and, and for big corporations and the, the real big players in this, that something will be done. And we could justifiably criticise governments and small, big multinationals um, because every one of us um but but every one of us needs to do our part too we we all need to do what we can to limit climate change and protect our world 
um, human overconsumption has reached crisis point and there is a finite amount of resources in our world and our over consuming is causing a level of destruction which needs urgent action it needs action now and with each generation the majority of the world is becoming more and more distant from um, their connection with nature and the rhythms of the world the days are gone when fruit and veg were seasonal um, as we could get most things all year round now. Um, I checked my fridge before I came up to do this message um, this evening and um, there, to see, see how far the items in my fridge had travelled. And the farthest was, um, I got a packet of Samphire, which travelled over three and a half thousand miles um, in a plastic carton so that I could use it for cooking. We all make choices, don't we? And in that instant, I made the wrong choice. I should never have bought that product. I could have used asparagus or British Sunfire or something instead. Instead of that, I was too lazy to read the packet and something in my fridge had to travel three and a half thousand miles to get to me. Don't make any sense at all. And so as Christians, we need to heed how we are treating the world. Um, for and, and for a far more important reason than global warming god created the world and called it good and gave us dominion over it gave humans dominion over it dominion not in the sense that we rule over it and could be selfishly taking what we want from it but dominion in the sense that we have responsibility for the world that is got what god charged us with and one of God's first gifts to Adam and Eve was that he set them to work in the Garden of Eden. He gave them um, a purpose in life and he, he gave them the purpose of taking care of the beautiful world which he had created. Um, so given humanity a role in his creation. And that is a part as an important part of our ministry on earth as saving souls growing saints and serving humanity is it's not separate to who we are as christians but an integral part of who we are as christians to care for god's creation we worship a god is who is not only our savior but a god who is our creator too god speaks to us through the power of his creation there's a rhythm about it creation isn't static is it it's changing and growing the seasons are a perfect example of that it grows and it dies and it becomes new again and there's that rhythm of life which is so important we can experience the fullness of god's love and grace when we reflect on god as creator and how he cares about the world which he created so as Christians, we need to challenge the way we look at the world, um, not as a resource for our taking, but as a gift for our nurturing. Um, one of the early Christian saints, going right back um, almost to New Testament times, but not quite, said, there are three dimensions to the cross. The vertical, which is about reconciling us with God, the horizontal, which is about reconciliation between people and finding the cross is firmly planted into the earth or on the earth, which calls us to reconcile with creation. God made a world which would revitalize itself. itself. Plant throws out seeds to form new plants. Animals have babies, but it's going to take a very, very, very long time um to re revitalize um creation because of what we've taken away from it they reckoned that in the rainforest there's a cure for every disease but there's also a staggering figure that we are destroying the rainforest at 28 million hectares a year it would take decades centuries to rebuild that rainforest back up again and if current trends continue the way they are at the moment between three and five centigrade warmer 
is what the world will become by the end of this century. This has got to be the time for action. In creation, there's a blueprint of God's harmonious plan for this kingdom where everything can find its place and is interdependent on things around it. Our plundering of the world is changing that rhythm and endangering the whole of creation, including putting human lives at risk. If we want to reconnect with God, not just as saviour, but as creator, then we need to consider how we treat the natural world. We need to find a way to, to root ourselves in God's character and reflect this in our actions as followers of Christ. I personally try to limit the amount of plastic I use and to do other um, things which will help the environment. So I reuse, as many people do, their shopping bags. Um, I try to buy fruit and veg unpackaged whenever I can, which is not always possible. Um, this year I tried to grow a lot of my fruit and veg um, in my own garden. I, I recommend this one. I use bars of soap and bars of shampoo and bars of hair conditioner when I have my shower. shower. It's expensive to start with, but actually it lasts a very long time. It's well worth doing. I get my gas and electricity from a company which claims to be environmentally friendly. Um, I've joined an online subscription service which provides all um, my cleaning products and everything is biodegradable. Um, it involves no plastic at all and every single component of the packaging um, can go straight onto the compost heap with no trouble at all. And yet doing all that, doing not going mad, but doing what I feel I can, I still got half a box of recycling plastic at the end of every week. So it's not easy, is it? But we need to make an effort when we can. And the truth of the matter is that the small part we play isn't going to change the destination of the world. You know, if I used all the plaque and a pack of, um, plastic in the world, that's not going to change things because I'm just a small part of that. So, but we need to lobby Parliament and to pray um, to get bigger changes made too. But the small part we can play will change not only the way we recycle and treat God's creation, but change our attitude to Jesus too, um, which is even more important for us as Christians. So we will see Jesus not only as saviour, but as creator of the world and give that the the ovation that it needs the small part we play will fulfill god's commands to have dominion over all the world for the past couple of sundays we've been holding our services under the title of limitless dreams and before the world began when it was just a swirling mass god had this wonderful dream about this world he was gonna um create and God completed and accomplished um, that dream and when he looked at what he had created he called it very good. A world which had rhythms and relationships and interactions and interreliance between the whole of his creation depended on the rest of the creation. A world which um, in which he made humanity a part of that creation when he gave Adam and Eve work to do in the garden and when he challenged them to have dominion over it. A world where Christ stands today, not just as saviour, but as creator, and calls us into that mission with him, where we don't only save souls, grow saints, and serve suffering and humanity, but our mission is to God as creator as well, and to protect and to recover um, his world in whatever way we can. So as Christians, we need to think seriously about what that means for us. So let's enjoy a harvest song together and then I will pray with you.
Shall we pray? Father God, as we come to give thanks to you this harvest time, harvest time, we want to start by acknowledging that you are good and you are faithful and love is available to us every day. In these days when trials seem greater, situations more difficult and our world is in disarray, we come to you knowing that you are good and your goodness is displayed to us each day in different ways. In recent times when our usual way of living has had to change, we thank you for that you never change, that you are the same today as you have always been and that as we look to tomorrow we will trust you because you will never let us down. Our world is hurting and broken just now. Your creation is in danger just now. So we pray for those um, who have lost loved ones. Please comfort them in their grief and loss. Cover them with your peace and your presence and um, as only your Holy Spirit can do. And God, we pray for governments and big corporations that can make drastic change to the way that the um, creation is going. And um, we pray especially for the summit coming up in Glasgow in November. And just pray that prom big promises and big dreams will come out of that summit and that people will keep to them. And we ask this because we are just so grateful for the world which you have given us dominion over. Amen. Amen and God bless. I will see you next week. Goodbye.